architecture shifting towards these new digital technologies because somehow there are some missed opportunities about using the digital in real constructions. We look in how the construction actually evolves using digital techniques and how that transfers back into the design of architecture. So instead of looking how do we design architecture and then build it afterwards, we look at how can we build with the computational tools today and then how do we transport this new building culture into a new design culture. And if you think about building a building, it's very much like a process as well. Now, this means that conceptually, the fact that you can design a process by programming a computer and, and you're, you can also design the process of building a building and you can start to kind of couple these designs of processes. But for us, somehow, it was not enough to just stay in the digital. We always wanted to see how that transfers to the physical materiality of architecture because, I mean, it's one of the beautiful things of architecture that it becomes, you know, tangible. We have this big laboratory, it's called the Robotic Fabrication Laboratory. It's a worldwide unique facility where you actually have four robots hanging from the ceiling. And the concept of this fabrication space is that you have a very generic space that is unobstructed by any security uh, measures or so, uh, which is completely accessible to people. And the people and the robots can actually work together as freely as possible in this space. So they work basically, they share a physical space, but also a digital space. Today, I think 3D printing and robotic fabrication kind of come together. They still can be defined separately, but it's almost an artificial separation. They're gonna blend into one another. So you might use a robot to 3D print something in a layer-based process. You might use a 3D printing machine to actually have a simplified robotic process on it, etc. So, I mean, in the end, it's basically mechanical device to control physical deposition of matter. Your authorship is clearly evolving in these times in the sense that if you program codes, uh, you actually kind of program certain sense of behaviors in some, let's say, algorithmic form combined with a sen sensibility uh, on how that expresses itself in let's say, architectural terms and becomes functional to architecture. If you have this openness, uh, the computational tools are also for you because uh, they lend themselves to different ways of, of kind of curating. And that makes it a very interesting and also intellectually, let's say, challenging uh, shift uh, in the perception of how we perceive our profession. In 2005, we bought this first uh, robot here at ETH Zurich. Obviously, there was a clear concept why we did that, but what was really surprising was how it resonated with the world. So the moment was right to do this step and suddenly all these other schools and an entire community built up of architects saying, we want this, we want to work with this. We can all only discuss the future or make the future by experimenting on it and, and uh, let's say, claiming it through demonstration.